In the second uh, week, in the second series of video and the associated uh, written tutorials, we are looking at doing a proper job of, uh, of simulation. So we are going to start by looking at 2D models, uh, purely 2D models, which can often be a very good way to, to work, especially if everything is acts in, in a plane stress or plane strain style, if the loads are all in a plane, if the part is essentially a two-dimensional part, there is absolutely no need to use a three-dimensional simulation. Two-dimensional simulation with 2D elements is generally much more, uh, much more efficient, therefore fast. Right, so first thing, we are going to create a model using Design Modeler this time. So, show you a few uh, a few tricks as well that can, can, can help to reduce the size of the model. So as usual, we are in meter, so we don't want that. So we are going to change to millimeter. And I'm going to select the X, Y plane. This is important, very important. If you, uh, if you want to work in 2D, you must, your part must have been created in the X, Y plane without a Z component. So we go in the X, y, X, Y plane, we look flat to it, X and Y, and I'm going to create to create um, a plate with a hole. So sketching, to sketch it, I'm going to go straight with rectangle, create a rectangle. And that's it. Now, I will want to use symmetry at the later stage. I'm going to impose symmetry directly. Makes my life a little bit easier. So the symmetry that works well here is called symmetry. And in order to, uh, to make it work, you select first the axis of symmetry, so that one here, and becomes yellow, and then the two objects that must be symmetric, so these two. Okay, do it again, symmetry for vertical symmetry this time. Excellent, and I will dimension. Dimension, so we'll dimension things in a way that allows us to do some quick calculation in our head as well. So I'm going to select uh, V1, make it 100 millimeter. This one, 200 millimeter, not, not so important. I will want to apply the load uh, horizontally in the simu in simulation. Fine, okay, great. I've done that. I select, I select the sketch, and uh, I could extrude it, but no, I do not want to create a 3D model. I want to create a 2D model. So I need to you to make a surface. And the tool is a surface from sketches. What do we want to add material? Yes, yes, the thickness, I might have put it here directly. I want one millimeter. Again, to make, to keep a simple calculation. As usual, I need to generate design modeler. Okay, so we have got a, a thin plate, one millimeter thin plate. Um, to make things more interesting, I want to create a hole into it. So I'm going to create a new sketch in the same plane. I could select the plate, but then it does some weird things and it changes the origin. So I, will, I, I want to, 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 to create my sketch in the XY plane by default. I select it, I go into sketching, I will create a circle. Why you circle? Circle. Circle, I will dimension the circle. And let's say 20 millimeter circle. Okay, fantastic. Done. And now I need to do something. A circle uh, will cut. And well, even if this is a surface, you you need you, you use the extrude tool. In SolidWorks, you would need a special surface uh, cut extrude. I think. I don't want to add material. I want to cut the material and so on and so on. Okay, generate. That is good. I now have a plate. Now, we don't have to do next what comes next, but it is a sensible thing to do. Because you can see, this is a symmetric. There's a lot of symmetry there. That line is symmetry. So that line is symmetry. So what we need to do is, well, we don't need to, but it will. we can reduce the size of, uh, of the model by four by applying, applying symmetries. So let's do that. So that's relatively simple. Uh, symmetry, I think, is found is in the tool. 
So we'll apply the first symmetry. It's kind of a feature if you want. So symmetry and a symmetry plane. It's still the symmetry plane. So symmetry plane, I will I need the symmetry plane, the XZ, and this one is the YZ. So let's do YZ well XZ first. Apply it to everything and you want to export it oh absolutely yes we want to export it to a mechanical so let's generate that and automatically it's cutting cutting it and i need a second symmetry it's a tool symmetry and the symmetry plane this time is yz uh, so the yz plane selected applied again the usual generate okay Fabulous. So now I have cut the part four, which should speed up things. I mean, I don't. I probably don't need to speed up very much. This is very simple. It's already in two dimensions. There won't be a lot of elements. But still, for a larger, it's a good habit, and for larger parts, it can make um, a big, big difference. So I have reduced size by four, and as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, the time in a, in a model varies, increases with a square of the number of, uh, of elements. So if I've divided my model number of node elements by, by 4, uh, square of that is 16, so I make things go around 16 times faster. Ish, I mean, that's just approximate the whole boundary effect and so on and so on. But uh, maybe, uh, let's say 10 times. Well, that's not, that's not negligible. Okay, great. Having done that, we can, we can uh, leave design modeler. And go into mechanical. We now are in mechanical. And I just did a table mistake because I forgot to change the analysis type to 2D. So if I continue, the system would, uh, would, uh, would throw a wobbly and not be very happy. Feel free to experiment, but it's, it will not work. Okay, so I need to leave that. And go to workbench and now I'm in a bit of a trouble boy because I've got something that started but something I don't want to do that can happen so if you right click I can just simply reset it yeah and we did it all that fine so I kind of flush it okay so go back to geometry and can see the property of that uh, geometry and it's set as a 2 3d let now if what if you don't have that property well just like that, you could obtain it by right clicking on geometry and go into the properties. There it is. And now I want to make sure that it's in 2D. 2D, fabulous. And let's go into mechanical. mechanical has imported the part so how am i going to load that that part so it's symmetric okay and therefore well if i apply a load here well then it should also be by symmetry reproduce there there and, and there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, insert a force. Force, 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 force. Where are you? Force. Here. I'm going to choose that edge. Now something that's very nice that is relatively new in ANSYS is you see these two arrows, you can click on it and automatically it will apply, apply the geometry. Now magnitude is, uh, if I want a total of a 10 kilonewton in that direction. So 10, kilo, 10 kilonewton in that direction, therefore 10 kilonewton in the other one. That will give me divided by, I've got an area here of 100 millimeter times one millimeter of thickness, so 100. So that would give me a nominal stress of 100 megapascal. That's great, but don't forget there is a symmetry here, so I will need five kilonewton. So let's do give it at five, 5,000 newton. Okay, now direction, I can change it. Now it's not good, so I want to change direction. So I'm going to choose 
that one and apply it. Tension or compression? I want tension, so I apply it. Okay, uh, let's create a quick mesh. Let's generate a mesh. Just, just a quick one to start. And solutions. Solutions, I'm going to insert uh, di directional deformation along the X, I can change direction. Uh, okay, I want the X one, actually, in fact, something that you can do, that's quite cool. You right click and you can rename based on definition. So it's X axis, it tell me what, what it is. I'm also going to insert um, stress. The one I want really is a normal stress this time along the X axis. Fantastic. So I'm going to rename based on definition, x-axis, and I'm going to do it again, but this time unaveraged. Insert on the, uh, the stress, normal, also on the x-axis, but this time I'm going to, to, to modify it to unaver unaveraged. That, uh, rename based on definition, also I need to rename it properly to make sure that I understand the difference. Unaveraged. Now the difference between average and unaveraged, we will discuss during during the lectures. But let's not forget that everything happens at nodes. At nodes, we solve matrices or the system solve matrices between displacements and and uh, and forces. And from the displacement, the strain is obtained, and from the strain, the um, the stress. And that's where that the difference comes. Uh, nominally, for a simple element, there is one value of the stress per, per element. It is, it is interpreted between the values of the strain between uh, two different different uh, nodes. Okay, again, this is a bit theoretical and you will need the lecture to, uh, to look at that. And that's not the point of, of, that, of, that, uh, of that video. Yeah. But it can be helpful sometimes to visualize the difference between the average and unaveraged uh, stresses. Uh, rename. It's good too. What else will we need? Let's uh, let's put a font myzis out of interest. Uh, stress font myzis. Okay, cool. Excellent. So let's uh, let's solve. Let's see what happens. Let's see what we get. Out. The stress is terrible. The, uh, the stress. The uh, mesh is not very good. But let's uh, give it a quick. A quick spin. Right, so now I did not expect this, I expected it to fail, I have to admit. It didn't fail. Why did I expect it to fail? Because there is no, nothing is fixed, okay, everything is relying, everything is relying on um, on the symmetry and sometimes, sometimes due, due, due to numerical effects, the mesh being what it is, it uh, it uh, it it uh, it might create some infinitesimal, or very very small forces in uh, one direction, that which would make would make uh, the part translate. So if there is nothing, if nothing is fixed, it's often a good idea to add a so-called. So, so you right-click on any setting and insert. Uh, no. Go on any setting, sorry, and check in the detail of any setting, and modify the so-called weak springs. So weak springs. Essentially, add a very, 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 very small spring at each node, and that force, in effect, in effect, uh, smoothies all the very, very small numerical errors. But hey, fine, it 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 it's solved. That's, that's that's fantastic. So he's going to complain a little bit because of some numerical. It gives us some uh, some possible messages. We can check the messages. That's a warning. But yeah, no, I think it's uh, fine. So at this stage, I'm going to uh, to, to stop this video. And the next in the next uh, video, we are going to look at refining refining the mesh and uh, and improving the convergence to check whether we can actually trust the results that we have obtained. Thank you very much.